when is it really over? When is the last and final time that a narcissist will exit your life and they never come back? This is a tricky question to tackle, and hopefully you find the strength to leave before the narcissist says so long for good. There are obvious signs that the end is near, so let's take a look at what will be happening right before a narc might just be seeing their way out of your life for good. Number one, your hot and cold treatment is on the increase. Narcs run hot and cold while they're juggling different sources of supply, and they have a lot of things going on at the same time. If you begin to notice things are constantly cold in your neck of the woods, this is a sign that you are getting the bare, bare minimum from a narc because they're entertaining other people. And this is going to go hand in hand with other forms of what I call a communication breakdown. The narcissist might begin to ghost you periodically. They might give you silent treatments where you get nothing for days or even weeks. You might get that overall feeling that the narcissist is annoyed with you. They are. You're intruding while they are trying to go after other sources of supply. So they're going to seem very rushed with you, very snippy, and forcefully push you onto the back burner. If you call out this kind of behavior, they will round on you and immediately get defensive. You might be called clingy, obsessive, annoying, and be guilt-tripped into just shutting up so, of course, they can keep doing exactly what they want to do. Number two, they stop caring about what you do. If this person was controlling and or insecure, they needed to know what you were doing all the time. And you could tell that they needed to feel in control and be all-seeing, all-knowing, all-powerful. You'll notice that as the relationship comes to a permanent close, the narcissist really can't be bothered anymore. They're going to ask less questions if they ask any at all. You might tell them something and they'll go, hmm, okay, whatever. They'll seem aloof, detached, uninterested. They're just not going to care. Also, along the same lines, there won't be much, if any, jealousy anymore. Again, they're just not going to seem fussed about where you are, what you're doing, why you're not texting back right away, why you're not calling. In fact, they might seem quite okay with the fact that you're not getting in touch as much as you used to because, again, their time and attention is being focused elsewhere. Number three, time that is spent with you is rushed and just overall pretty shitty. They show up late, they leave early, they come to dinner not hungry, and they bail out real quick. They stay for one drink. There's no cuddle afterwards. We all know where this is going. Things just suck. It's rushed. It's forced. You're the bottom of the barrel. It's low effort, low investment, and you can feel that all you are getting from this person is what's left of them at the end of the day. You are officially getting the leftovers. This is a very, very big sign that they could be ready for their final discard. Number four, the social media distress begins or ramps up if it's already begun, respectively. You might start to be hidden on social media. You're hidden, you're blocked and unblocked, you start playing that game with this person. You're going to notice an influx of people on their followers or friends list. Whatever site you're on, I don't do much social media, so respectively, whatever the case may be. They might begin to have a presence on social media that seems much more secretive. They might even say they don't have social media, or maybe they legitimately don't, until all of a sudden, they do. Again, they don't claim you on social media. Dating apps start popping up, private calls. It's a whole thing, social media-wise, internet-wise, and cell phone-wise, that begins to unfold that lets you know time is going to other places and time is going to other people. Number five, requests for more privacy ramp up, especially when it comes to their cell phone. The phone now goes everywhere that they go. I don't care where it is. Something as simple as they're going to check the mail and that phone is in their pocket. They get frustrated if you sit too close. They're doing that good old turning the screen away from you. 
they yell and get nasty with you if you look over their shoulder or if they think you're looking over their shoulder. You're going to be accused now repeatedly of not giving them enough privacy. And again, they're going to try to guilt trip you and fall back to you're clingy, you're obsessive, you're needy. And you'll notice that all of a sudden now, as they reach this area of a final discard with you, they need space and space. They need space and time and privacy and space and more space. Space without you in it is basically the end of that sentence. They'll tell you, get a life. They're busy. Go do something. And they're going to tell you that because obviously they already are. Number six. There is absolutely no interest in you. Your well-being isn't noticed anymore. Not that it really much ever was, but you're really going to begin to notice how little you matter as we reach the end of the relationship. They could see you on crutches and not be bothered or fussed to ask why or how can they help. You're going to get this very clear feeling that if you caught on fire, they'd kind of yawn and go, you know, you're such a drama queen. Like, you're so pushy and annoying. Look, just stop, drop, and roll. Get out of my face. And they really wouldn't even care. There is no interest in you at all whatsoever. Think back to when you were being love bombed. If they can look at you and you don't even like register, you're not even a blip on the radar, they might be getting ready for that final discard. Number seven, busy, 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 too busy for you. They're always working. They're out golfing, they're playing other sports, they're messing around, the hobbies, the friends, the family, the kids, busy little bee, but they never have any time, except they do, but apparently they just don't have any for you. They just can't seem to carve out any time for you. If they have time to go hang with the boys or go out for the girls' night, surely they have an hour or two for their partner. If they can text for an hour after work and chat with you on the phone, then surely they have a half an hour to do something else. Here's the thing. If it just seems like bullshit, it probably is, and the end is probably near. Number eight. Suddenly, they're dead and dying. They're too sick to see you. There's always a headache. There's always an illness. They don't feel good or someone else has an illness. Something wild is always going on that's keeping them from being present with you. There's a disaster around every corner. These are all signs that point to the final discard and that it could be coming your way. But in all honesty, it's still really, really hard to predict as good as you can get at like learning about narcissism. The last time I spoke to the narcissist that I was in a relationship with, we had a perfectly normal texting conversation. Was the relationship perfect? Oh, hell no. It was rocky. We were doing not amazing, but there was no fighting. There were no mean words. I hadn't been getting ghosted or been getting silent treatments. And then poof, I was ghosted and the person was gone. I mean, yes, I did subsequently get hoovered, but after the hoover, that was it. I only ever got one Hoover, not that I wanted more, <laughs> and I still don't. But here's the thing. Why? Why was that the way it went? Why was there never another text or another call? I don't ask this again with a sad longing for something, but it's just curious when you think about it. Some people get Hoovered 11 billion times. Some people like myself get one Hoover. This person goes away. They never come back. Some very, very rare cases they leave forever and you never get hoovered at all. It's like, that's why this is something that's so unpredictable. When is the last time going to be the final last time? A lot of it honestly has to do with how many other sources of supply they have. How many other people do they have pulled into their harem? How many other people do they have on the hook? Do they have other sources, even non-romantic sources? Can they feed off of their parents, their kids, their siblings, their co-workers? How many different avenues can they go down? Are they successful on social media or the dating apps? Because if they are, they might need to hoover you less and the final discard might be the final discard. 
The bottom line is it will come when we don't expect it sometimes. If they come back a million times, why wouldn't it be one more? We're all creatures of habit. We just kind of feel like it will keep happening. And we don't know. Only a very mentally ill, delusional narcissist really knows when they're done and when they're done for good. I'm not even sure sometimes that when they're done for good, they know that they are or that they know why they are. We're kind of leaving this all in the court of somebody else's brain that I, I'm not sure these people are capable of like tying their own shoes. Really, how they think about things really isn't any of my business. These people have very poor decision making skills. Even if and when they do decide to leave, it's going to be for like a stupid reason anyway. So why they come back is also probably a stupid reason. Anyway, I'm done ranting. Survivor, when you stop doing the job, somebody else will. At some point, they're going to drop you and they're going to go somewhere else. That is narcissism in a kooky little nutshell. <laughs> what do you feel are the signs of a final discard? Share with me down in the comments. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day, Survivor, and take care of yourself.